Hi, welcome back to the Arcade Repair Tips video series with a special video on what you voted saying that you would like for us to film. And that would be on uh, changing a control panel overlay. And here's our victim today. As we see, we got a game here. It was a cyberball. And, uh, but what we want to do is we want to make it into a classic arcade game. And we have a brand new overlay here that we'd like to put on here instead of this. This is yellow and that doesn't match very good. Then we wanted something new on there. Maybe yours has some cigarette burns or something like that and you want to replace this. What we're talking about is the sticker pretty much that goes over the, over the CPO or control panel overlay where you play the game, where the joysticks and the buttons are. So it's going to involve just a couple steps and uh, we want to take you on that journey today so if you'll come on it come on in and we'll show you what we're going to do first thing we got to do is open it up you can't do much work with it on the game so we're going to unlatch it you guys have probably seen our video on opening up a control panel how to get parts of a game stuff like that so see what's open now we got to get to it we're actually going to remove it from the game and then we're going to have to take off all the buttons and joysticks and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we've removed the control panel from the cabinet. And now, you know how it is. Some of them are going to have Phillips heads, some are going to have flat heads, whatever. I've got the tools assembled that I need. The main thing that we're going to do is anything that you see up here, including this piece of, piece of plexiglass, the buttons, the joystick, everything from the top is going to have to come off. This stuff right here may or may not have to come off if it doesn't go all the way through. On this instance, with this big, thick piece of wood, they don't. A lot of times, like on your Miss Pac-Man or something, they may go all the way through, too. So if you see it up front, you're going to need to take it off back here. And there's no particular place. I like to, just for the sake of it, that we're not going to reuse these wires. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my wiring first, just because that will simplify this. Again, if this is your first time or you're not too familiar, uh, you can save these switches and whatever you want, but you may want to mark everything. As you can see, someone here marked L, R, D for down, I'm assuming, uh, you know, stuff like that. So somebody's already done a lot of that. i tell you what, you're going to sell this as a kit. I might just leave all this hooked up. Normally I would just cut these wires, but uh, we're going to take that out of the way. That just had this little screw holding on there. This is a button wrench. If you guys don't have one of these, uh, these are like two dollars and something from Hap. Bob Roberts may sell them, but Hap Control sells them. Um, they're made so that you can uh, get on this button. There's a couple different sizes. You flip it around so you got the right size. You can just take that button wrench right off like that. If it's really tight, you can stick a screwdriver or something through there and give you a little more torque like that. It's made so that you can put a little pressure on it. And I've actually used these in a, besides arcade games before, around the house doing some plumbing and stuff. These things really come in handy. Let's take that button off. Always a good thing to, even if you're going to replace it with, uh, with new buttons, which we probably will, or if not, I always like to say buttons you can always use. You never know when you're coming across a game has a bad button or something broke, most of the time it's a good time to, to save them for that reason. I'm just, some of these were loose by hand. Again, I'm just putting the nuts back on there just because convenience sake here. Okay, that one's a little tight. I'm just going to unscrew that. Thank you, Jonathan. Grabbed a little box. If you guys see me working a lot, you'll notice I always have a box or cup or something. It's just so much easier to keep this stuff together. And then if you want to sell this or something as a kit, you, you can put all that in one box and sell it like that. Somebody uh, might want just to use buttons or whatever. They have value. I always forget one end is bigger than the other. There are a couple different button sizes. That's why they give you two sizes. One size is bigger than that size. You just flip it. And I don't think there's any particular order unless something is particularly in your way. I'm just kind of taking off everything, so it doesn't really matter. 
Um, I like to get the big stuff in, in a way out of the way just because it gives me more room. Taking off these joysticks. These are actually screwed into the wood. A lot of times you'll have a carriage bolt coming through with a nut right here. This is a little different since it's wood, which I don't blame them. They used what was easier for them. You know, just dumping everything in this box. Kind of neat and clean. This bottom ones would be a little bit tricky to get to, but not too bad. Most of the time you turn anything a couple turns and get it out the rest of the way by hand. Just some quick tips is, as we're talking, I love to use these magnetic tip screwdrivers. You see that's got a magnetic tip. Really helps up in video games and stuff. So I have to be careful because it will pick up other stuff that you don't necessarily want, but kind of like filming this stuff in, in real time. We're going to take the E-clip off. That'll pull the whole joystick out. We'll team up on it here. The joystick is held by the E-clip. Once he removes that, then this will fall apart. Should be able to pull the shaft out, and that lets us get this off. As you can see, I made pretty short work of that one. Hope you guys are enjoying watching this in kind of real time. Uh, for some of those that may need a little extra footage and maybe a little bit more confidence. Like I said, yours may have a carriage bolt here and a, going this way with a nut on this side. The main thing is you got to get this off uh, you know they're all a little different but same basic thing we just want to take them off it really helps when you're doing a total project too where you're going to replace them anyway so these aren't the best joysticks in the world somebody's really likes them so <laughs> you know maybe they'll Warner. Didn't bother me much in the arcade playing them. Have our makeshift bench today. A couple stools and a piece of wood. Makes a pretty good table. And there we go. There's the joysticks, the wiring, everything. Now, you'll notice that everything is gone except for this piece of plexi, which is, this is why I'm talking about a carriage bolt. So your joystick may look like this, and on the back side have a couple of nuts. We're just going to take them off. Fortunately, see with that stuff off of there too, you guys might see why I left this for last. I got a lot of stuff out of my way when I'm using this wrench. It, but you could have used just an open-ended wrench or a crescent wrench or something if you didn't have a socket for it. Again, somebody will ask probably what size. This is a 7 16 but that, that, that may not matter on yours at all. You might have um, 3 8 or a half inch. Who knows? So you can't always go by that. We'll pull that carriage bolt out. Again, you see, we like to just put that screw with it. Put it in there. It's real easier to keep up with. This piece right here we don't necessarily have to take off, but it doesn't serve a lot of purpose either. So we may just take it off to pretty it up a little bit. Back in the day, or when you had an arcade, you know, you really, people would try to break into them. For your home, you don't have to necessarily tie them, you know, with all the lock bars and stuff like that. Usually we take that kind of stuff off. What's up to you? Hey, you know, your game, what you want to do. That's your business. Now that that screw is off, you can see that that came right off. So 
So now, we also have this plastic piece here that they kind of had taped on and stapled on for looks. We'll set that to the side. Again, I'm just putting this stuff all together. Not sure what we might need later. Didn't have to take these off. These clips, you know, this is where the thing clips that you have to pop the control panel off. Uh, anyway, didn't have to take that off today. But if you wanted to, you could. Or in your situation, you might have to. If it goes all the way through the front, you're going to have to. This one, though, was screwed into this wood. So it didn't really have to. Now, everything is off, and we're down to just the sticker, which is where we want to get. Okay, now it's time to actually start removing the sticker. Just a few tools that we like to use. Um, these are little hand scrapers that you can get. Um, just about everybody carries them. A little razor blade goes in there. We're going to use that to actually do some scraping. Then uh, WD-40 is wondrous. Um, let me just give you a little quick tip. You ever get go to the auction, they stick a sticker right on top of your... Uh, WD-40 removes stickers and uh, stuff really good. That residue that it leaves, or like duct tape leaves when you peel it up, that kind of stuff. WD-40 is really great for that. Uh, a friend of mine that would is a big WD-40 fan would like for me to say at this time, it's a cleaner, not a lubricate, lubricator, although most people use it like that. Also getting off rusty bolts and stuff. Uh, another, another good product is Goo Gone. Uh, you guys are probably pretty familiar with that by now. Um, there is also Goof Off. thing about Goof Off that you need to remember is uh, Goo Gone is usually uh, safe on plastics and stuff, but Goof, I mean Goo Gone is this stuff right here. Goof Off works really good, but if you put it on a piece of plexiglass, it will, it will uh, damage it forever it will, and it will look horrible. So when... If we need to, we'll get some goof off, but goo gone should work. Also, we have a heat gun. Now, this may be the step that some of you guys aren't familiar with. What we're going to actually do is heat it up, turn it on. It looks like a hair dryer. It's not. It gets very hot. And by heating it up, we allow some of that glue to loosen up, and that will help take it off. There is another method that we're not going to do today. Some people put lighter fluid on it, light it on fire, and let it burn off. Um, I, I don't have a problem with that method at all, especially if you're going to repaint it and everything. But to me, it causes a little bit more work and it smells burnt. So you have to, and you got your burning plastics and stuff too, which is always, so just let me say this, starting off right now, be super careful. We're talking razor blades, we're talking about plastics and stuff. Just be super careful when you're doing this. The first thing that I like to do and that we'll do on this one is to get a corner going and just see how much can you get off by hand. I've had some that literally have almost peeled off. Now you may need a friend to come help hold it or to help you pull. And this one doesn't looks like it's going to be a great example for you guys. It doesn't look like it's going to want to come off very easily at all. This is an interesting piece too because we have sticker over a piece of metal that's over a piece of wood so while Jonathan is holding it you see I'm I can be pretty tough with it and you know I just always say first step is to get as much off as you can by hand and as you can see just by hand I got some pretty big pieces off now this other stuff we're gonna have to come through with a razor blade and we'll, we'll do all that but the first thing I want to do get as much off by hand as I can. I'm just, even with my fingernail there, I found a corner. I didn't go very far, did it? Just getting up under there with my hands. I, I think sometimes we overvalue certain tools. You just got your hands, your eyes, and your ears. Sometimes are an arcade repair guy's best things. And the closer that you get to the bottom of the sticker, don't try to pull it from the end. Try to pull it from there and now Johnson's going to kind of demonstrate the heat gun he'll get ahead of me just a little bit the only problem with this is it is hot I might have to get a pair of pliers 
and pull while he does that. By, by him heating that up some, that helped that come, come right off till you get to that, that little tough spot there. And who knows why, for whatever reason, some stuff's just tougher than other areas. You know, got more glue. I'll let him heat that up a little bit more. Now he's going right ahead of me and heating it up as he heats it up. I, so when I hit that spot, it got real easy there for a second. I'll let him do a little bit more. A really great two-person job if you've got a spouse or a kid or somebody just to help you hold it. Again, be careful the heat gun is, is hot. And this is hot when I'm touching it. But by heating it up, you know, I hope you guys can see this on film. The places where he's heated has come way off. We're not going to have to hardly do anything else to. He's a, using the heat gun, heating it up just a little at a time. You can't get too far ahead because by the time you get to one point, it will have cooled off. I want you guys to get a look at this. Where we're using the heat gun has removed everything over here just by hand. It left some stuff, but that had, that's done a really good job. So it's a process. You can't really get in a big hurry. And some stuff is some stuff just peels right off. Some stuff been on there for 30 years now. Hey, it's stuck this long. It don't want to leave. But you know, as you can see, I want to get right in there right after he does that while it's still warm. It's even warm on my hands a, a little bit. Another good thing to have around would be a box or something. You're going to have a lot of little pieces of trash like this. As you can see, we'll just throw, try to clean up because that stuff will leave pretty good mess all over your shop and area. This I may not be able to get under. This is where I may use the scraper. This is kind of a combination of things. Get my corner peeled. Again, you'll notice I'm going to use my hands just as much as possible. Just because it's, I can feel it good and I can... But this is definitely a process. That's why you probably heard me say on uh, one of our podcasts, if you're fixing to sell the game, I wouldn't worry about it a whole lot because it's very little time consuming. But the end result, as you guys are going to see, is going to look awesome, especially if you're working one that's sticking to me um, that you know really needs some help. Kind of use the razor blade. To get under there. Okay, heat that up for me right there. We're just I just kinda like picking one area, just kind of coming around with that. So I can really get under there pretty easily. You just have to be careful. We are talking about a razor blade here, and I know what I'm talking about, got the scars to prove it. Don't get too confident. A lot of control panel overlays are just the top two. This one wraps all the way around, so got a little bit more than the average bear. And I gotta get me a, a good starting place. I can go and see a good furniture shop. Gotta have a good start. That you can tell too that probably around this corner they might have put some extra glue or something. Get that right up in there and we'll 
the, the gun really does help a lot, and it does help having two people. You'll see that again when we get everything off. Then we're going to... Now, I'm pretty particular. Some guys just halfway peel this stuff off, put another one over there. I like to get everything down to the bare as much as possible. Even then, not always entirely possible, but... See where he heated that? You can hear it just snapping and crackling. And Even if that temporarily lays back down for a minute, when I get back under it, see where he warmed it up for me. But it's really starting to peel right there. The glue is what's holding it. And by heating it up, you're getting under that glue. Okay, we're going to continue doing this part, which is going to take us a little while. We might even time it for you guys. And then we'll come back and wrap up and show you how to get the, the finished product. Okay, we worked really hard. And it really didn't take but about 15 minutes. But as you can see, some of these, when we heated them up, I just want, didn't want you guys to get too discouraged. Look at some of these big pieces that once it got really hot all over, started to come off. This right here is basically everything that would come off easily or as we pulled it off. So this is what we could get off by hand. Now we're going to go to the next step. Also, we do want to make mention that it's still very sticky. In fact, you might remember our table. It is stuck to the bottom of the table. So keep that in mind. It is very, very sticky. And a lot of guys, this would be good enough for you. You might just put your new overlay on. I just want to tell you, though, that if you really, if it's a game you're going to restore and keep, we highly recommend you take it all the way down, get all the sticky off and everything, and that's going to be the next step of the process. Okay, now we're going to kind of go to the phase two part of this where we're going to, uh, remember we said this stuff is really sticky. If I stick the paper towel, it sticks and leaves paper towel on there. So we're going to have to clean this off some, somewhere. Uh, a couple things that we got, like some uh, scotch pads, a little scrub brush, a little bristle brush, something like that. But... This is where we're going to use the scraper and uh, WD-40 and Goo Gone. We'll kind of show you both. Here's some sticker over here. Just spray this WD-40 on. Let it soak in for just a second. And you can come right behind that. I don't know how good you guys are going to be able to see this on film, but we're going to just scrape those areas. And if you can see this, it is where I sprayed that and I'm scraping it's just the glue is just piling up plus any leftover stickers and we are going to have to be careful using this scraper because this is wood see that just coming off of there like that also those stickers Anyway, you'll see that I like to use WD-40 a lot. It's really good for this kind of stuff. And this is uh, wood, but we can also do me do the metal part. Again, that's coming right up. Then up here where I didn't spray, you can see I'm really having to scrape a lot harder than down here where I did. It's almost bare wood. I mean, it just easily comes up off of there. Same way with kind of the goo going. We'll try it up here where this is sticky. I think both work really good. Whatever you have. Look at that sticker. You saw me just a minute ago struggling to peel that off. And then right there, it's just easily coming off. So there where I did that, you can't even see that. And of course we're down to bare wood even still getting a little residue off uh, we take it all all the way down like I said some people probably won't go this far now once we get it down to that point then we might come in again with like the scrub brush do a little bit of scrubbing you want to make sure the surface is good and smooth 
If it's wood, you could even sand, do a little sandpaper if you want to. I think that right there is good for sticker, though. Okay, so now that we have got uh, most of the sticker residue off, and let me just say this, it's kind of like raking leaves in your yard. You could spend the rest of your life and you may not get every single bit off, but we want to try to get off as much as we can. Just like raking your yard, you'll never get every leaf, but you get the majority of it off, and that was our goal. So we got this down, we took and wiped it down. I might want to mention that I did find a flexible uh, putty knife. You might have seen some of in the videos. It worked as good as the scraper. It's maybe better in some areas, and most of that come off. So now we're ready to install our control panel overlay, which is a new sticker here. Just like installing artwork or anything else, we're just going to put it on and peel it off. You guys can watch. Got my fingernails. Okay. I always like to start on the front where you're going to see because if for any reason it's short, you want it to be underneath, not short up top. So I'm going to hold this. Also, might want to square up one corner, then that way all you have to do is cut one side instead of both sides, but that doesn't really matter to me. This one kind of came a little wrinkly, didn't it, John? Most stuff likes to lay level, so I just like to just let it lay as it goes, come right down the middle. This will be a critical point here where we go around this corner. You guys can see that. Now what we're actually going to do is stick her over it and bondo the back side right there with these holes if we're not if they're holes we're not going to use again and then we'll drill new holes but you can if you just if you're doing the same control panel you would just poke a hole in right here then use an exacto knife and kind of cut around it but for our purposes we just wanted to show you how to take main thing is getting the old sticker off i think you guys will probably figure this part out pretty good but if you don't know a few tricks to taking it off we're going to pull this really tight right down the middle. Looks really good. You'll have a few air bubbles and we'll work some of them out. We didn't use Windex, you might notice on this, you could. We'd use the Windex method uh, just because the control panel is a little bit tougher and it's not perfect anyway. You could have used a sander or a grinder and got that even a little more smooth if you wanted to. Also, you might want to bondo any holes because if there's any dents or anything in this, it's going to show. With our hands, again... You guys, my, the theme of this video, you might notice my hands are just about uh, one of the best tools that I, I have. First thing, go right through the middle, then to the outsides. You can pull that stuff over. This little edge that's left over, we'll just take an X-Acto knife or um, <clears throat> a cutter. We'll just cut that, that little layover like that. Anyway, looks pretty good. Looks a lot different than it did. And the whole project time, about an hour, probably to do everything. You know, we've been filming now for a while, but uh, we're going to finish that up. Anyway, we hope that you guys have learned something today on replacing the control panel overlay. Now the next part will just be to cut out the holes, then we'll reinsert the buttons that we want and the joysticks, but we'll probably save that for another video. And anyway, we hope that you have uh, learned something today, and if you have any questions, you guys know how to get in contact with us. So thanks again for watching Arcade Repair Tips videos. For the last time, we're in high def. We're still going to be in high def. We're still here. Goodbye. <laughs>